Today, open source is enjoying tremendous success. Both individuals and organizations have come to recognize the value of collaboration in creating and maintaining a variety of works. Open source is now applied to many different types of initiatives, which hope to realize the same benefits from distributed peer review and transparency of process as those originally seen within the open source software movement. The promise of open source is higher quality, better reliability, more flexibility, lower cost, and an end to predatory vendor lock-in. These efforts may be labeled open source or simply referred to as open. Of course, there is open source software, and you are probably already well aware of, and maybe even working with, other efforts such as open source textbooks or simply open textbooks. Other examples include open access, open journals, open educational resources, open scholarship, open teaching, and of recent interest, massive open online courses, or MOOCs. These are just a few of the many initiatives now underway. Each of these efforts and the projects that support them employ a variety of techniques to promote sharing, collaboration, and self-direction for economic and strategic advantage. While many people and organizations may actively promote and even participate in open source projects as either adopters or even contributors, they may not be fully aware of the historical drivers that led to the open source movement, the rationale behind open source principles and practices, nor the concepts that have made the movement as successful and popular as it is today across so many disciplines. Importantly, open initiatives, no matter what the final output, benefit from the original principles and practices first described within the open source movement to develop and distribute their work. Understanding the rationale behind open source development methods and distribution will not only help you to assess the authenticity in the growing number of projects associating themselves with the open source movement, but also provide you with a foundation for your own behavior within those communities, ensuring your participation is as beneficial as possible for you, your organization, and ultimately the project itself. When first examining the opportunities of the open source movement, it is important to emphasize that such a culture of freedom is only made possible through the open source definition as maintained by the open source initiative. Indeed, each of today's efforts in developing and distributing open resources can trace their principles and practices to the free and open source software movement as articulated specifically in the open source definition. We must also acknowledge the important work of those individuals and organizations that the open source definition is built upon. The hacker culture, the GNU Manifesto and GNU Project, the Free Software Foundation, and the Debian Free Software Guidelines. So what is open source? The answer to that is actually quite simple, but it may not be very helpful in understanding the qualities and affordances of open source as a development and distribution model. Very simply, open source software is any software that carries an open source initiative approved license. Hmm, that isn't very helpful. So a better question might be, what is the criteria that the open source initiative uses to approve open source licenses and thus the creation of open source software in the promotion of open culture? The answer to that question is the open source definition. What happened right at the beginning was uh, the OSI adopted a set of pragmatic rules for evaluating licenses, and it, uh, those pragmatic rules came from the Debian project. Uh, Bruce Perrins had just written the Debian Free Software Guidelines, and OSI adapted the Debian Free Software Guidelines and created a new set of rules that it called the open source definition. The key thought was to make sure that any license that passed the test would give you permission in advance to use the software for any purpose, to look at the source code, to make changes and improve it, and to give it to anyone who you felt needed it.
and uh, any license that embodies and guarantees those four freedoms without restriction, so it gives you permission in advance, would qualify. And it was very obvious by using those uh, guidelines which licenses were open source and which licenses were not. Uh, a whole load of licenses uh, then and now people would like you to think are in some way related to open source. But if they don't guarantee those four freedoms to use, study, improve and distribute, then, uh, then they can't possibly be an open source license. The four freedoms originally outlined in the GNU Manifesto and GNU Project, sponsored by the Free Software Foundation, can be seen in other open initiatives of today. For example, the open content definition. Uh, we decided early on that what we needed a, a, a definition. We needed a kind of meta license to define the term open source. And what we came up with is a document called the Open Source Definition. It's derived from the Debian Free Software Guidelines that were originally written by Bruce Parents. I had written the original draft of that. Uh, discussed it for a month with the Debian developers. Debian is a Linux distribution and made it their project policy. And Eric and I decided to relabel what we'd written for Debian as the open source definition and to say open source is software that gives you a list of nine rights, which is in the open source definition. The first right is free redistribution. This doesn't mean free as in no price, it means liberty. Um, you have to be free to redistribute your software to someone else. And actually, no price is a side effect. You can charge for that redistribution or not. It has to come with source code so that someone can maintain a program. If they go from a PC to a Mac, for example, they can change the software. Derived works have to be possible. If someone has to improve your program, um, they should be able to distribute the result. Uh, there is a provision about integrity of the author source code, which says that the author can sort of maintain their honor, and if you make a change, you might have to change the name of the program or mark out your change very clearly so that your change doesn't reflect on the author. There is no discrimination against people or groups. Uh, the example I usually use is you can't stop an abortion clinic or an anti-abortion activist from using the software. Uh, there's no discrimination against fields of endeavor, and that means the software has to be usable in a business as well as in a school. The license has to be distributable. In other words, um, I have to be able to give that license to someone and that license then should work if that someone gives it to yet a third person. Uh, the license can't be specific to a product. In other words, if I um, distribute my software on a Red Hat system, the license can't say you can't distribute this on a SUSE or a Debian system. The license can't contaminate other software. So if I distribute this on a CD with another program, it can't say that other program must be free, otherwise you can't distribute my software. Uh, and then the only other part of the open source definition is a list of licenses that were accepted. We hope this video has provided you with a bit more background on the open source definition and the inspiration and ideals that have influenced open source software development as well as the broader open source movement. The open source definition serves as an international standard providing a nexus of trust around which developers, users, corporations, and governments can organize, collaborate, and co-create. It is by no means the only instrument used by communities of practice to foster openness in the creation of open artifacts and we hope you will seek out and review other important works to better understand the emergence and benefits of open development models. We also hope your examination of the principles and practices behind the open source movement will inspire you to join an open source project and contribute your experience and expertise.